Hello world from us at Radically New Life and welcome back to the Kingdom of God video series. So far in this video series we have talked about what Jesus, who is the cornerstone of the Kingdom of God, taught about salvation, citizenship, and war. This is our fifth video in the series and today we will be discussing the economics of God's Kingdom. So let's get started. Jesus teaches us that there are only two masters, God and Mammon which is money and all that it can buy, and that we must choose to work for only one. You may be thinking, no one could ever live without working for money. How could Jesus make such an unfair ultimatum? But Jesus already knew that most people would respond in that way. If you keep reading in Matthew 6, you'll see that Jesus addresses this common material concern. He says, do not worry about your life, whether you have enough food and drink or enough clothes to wear. Isn't life more than food and your body more than clothing? Seek the kingdom of God above all else and live righteously and your heavenly Father will give you everything you need. If you serve, honor, and work for God instead of money, then God will take care of all of your needs. After all, if he created the universe, then he can provide for you too. I encourage you to read the entire passage starting with Matthew 6:19 all the way through 6:34 since this shocking economic teaching of Jesus is one of the most important yet most ignored of all his teachings. What Jesus is describing for us in Matthew 6 is a completely new and totally foreign economy of the kingdom of God. Instead of the common economic structure based on currency or tradable resources, God's economy is based on love, a love economy. You may be wondering what love has to do with economics, but love actually has everything to do with it. If you look around you at the world today, you will see that there is great disparity between the first and third world and between the classes or castes of different nations. We believe that this is reflective of a disgusting lack of love for our fellow human beings because if we truly cared for one another, then we would not allow our brothers and sisters to suffer. So you see, the world isn't lacking in resources, but it is lacking in love. Jesus taught us to love our neighbors, even our enemies, as ourselves. He even goes so far as to say, as I have loved you, so you must love one another. This doesn't just mean that we should maybe sometimes feel bad for the suffering of others, but that we should actually practically love them as Jesus himself loved us when he came to earth and allowed himself to be crucified for our sins. Here, Jesus asks us to put the rubber to the road and show true selfless love to all. One way that we can follow Christ's teachings to love one another as ourselves is by applying our love economically, just like the first Christians. In Acts 2, 42 to 47, you can see for yourself how the early Christians lived together in full-time community, following the radical teachings of Jesus. The first Christians sold all their property and possessions and shared the money with those in need. And again, Acts 4:32 to 37 describes this sharing of possessions. There were no needy people among them because those who owned land or houses would sell them and bring the money to the apostles to give to those in need. This practical application of brethren love by forsaking all personal possessions and sharing all resources in common is directly obeying Jesus' teachings to love your neighbor as yourself and to let go of private ownership. This practice of sharing all in common is a fulfillment of God's economic policy for his kingdom by showing practical love to one another. Now let's see what Jesus says about people who do not show their love for others materially by sacrificing private wealth and comforts. He says, it is very hard for a rich person to enter the kingdom of heaven. I'll say it again, it is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich person to enter the kingdom of God. The problem with wealthy people is that they often love themselves more than they love their fellow brothers and sisters, which is how they can accumulate more than they actually need. In other words, the rich put money and the things money can buy above God. The sad part about this is that they are trading in all the glories of eternal life with God later for the material comforts of the world now. We should not take this matter lightly, especially when, when we consider what Paul said about greed being the root of all evil. 
So to avoid evil and to gain salvation, we must listen to what Jesus told us to do and love each other as much as he loves us, even and especially economically. This completely different economy based on love rather than greed is not only practical, it is God's will. But so few are willing and brave enough to step out in the faith of God's loving providence. We at Radically New Life and others like us are trying to live by faith like the first Christians, and we want your help in building up the kingdom of God and its economy of love. Do you have what it takes to truly love your neighbor as yourself? Thanks for watching the fifth video in our Kingdom of God series. Our next video in the series will explore how the Kingdom of God erases social divisions such as race, gender, and class to establish true equality between all citizens of heaven. If you'd like to hear more about the Kingdom of God and other topics on how to live a radically new life, please hit the subscribe button and check out our other videos. We also invite you to contact us with your questions, comments, and concerns via any of our resources listed in the description below. See you next time!